Hello everybody, my name is John Hammond, and welcome back to the YouTube video, and man, it's been a while. It's been a while since I posted a video, it's been a while since I posted a PowerShell video, and I have heard you, I've read your letters, you haven't sent me any letters, but I've read the comments, and I know you guys were really wanting this, so hopefully I'll be back at it, back on the saddle, and here we go. This is PowerShell, video number two. So we are going to talk about output and some file system operations. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. We know how to open up PowerShell. You can simply open up your little start button there and search PowerShell. It'll fire right up for you. So here we are at our prompt. We know the command lets now get child item. And that will display the current directory listing or what's in our current directory. And we know that's from our prompt visible where we are currently. If we were to move with anything within that, we are using a relative path. If we use a period forward slash, and anything that needs an absolute path includes the entire file structure, C colon backslash, or where we are from the root of what we're working with. So, simple recap, right? That was the get child item commandlet. We know that that is aliased as something that PowerShell lets us do with the ls kind of alias here. And we've seen dir, so ls if you're more Linux kind of oriented, DIR for more old school Windows, CMD.exe, some DOS days, and that's our output. Nice and easy, super small, we've done that before. Now we need to want to learn how we're actually going to interact with the file system, how we can do those copy file, move file, those regular things you would do in a GUI or in the file browser, in Explorer. So let's dive into that, but before we do, I want to chime in how we can actually output some of this output in a different way the things that PowerShell lets us do. So let's get started with that. I will get child item again. And we know through the pipeline, that vertical bar, just kind of the shift form of the backslash near keyboard above the enter key, that will allow you to transfer some of the C sharp .NET objects that we've seen as the resultant of that previous command into something else, something new. So I want to show you this kind of family of commandlets, format hyphen, and then whatever you want to format that output in. So it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. If you were to type format hyphen, and I just figured this out, I don't know if this is maybe my updated version of Windows, the PowerShell version I'm on right now, but if you hit control spacebar, it'll show you some of the options or the things that you can actually use. It'll help autocomplete what you're trying to work with. It'll even show you a little bit of the help information, what parameters or arguments you want to pass to it, what you can pass to it, and you can use your arrow keys to just kind of move around and navigate this little quick on the fly help system inside of PowerShell. So by default, the output that for, that uh, PowerShell will give you is format table. So if I were to pipe this to format table, you see the exact same results we had earlier. That's kind of boring and lame. You can change, I think, how you uh, actually have PowerShell default show you information. But the other options that we have are format wide. And that will showcase some of the output in just kind of a tabulated way, but not with the actual kind of headers, the rows and columns there. You can see it's just giving us the name of the entry, not any of the other properties that we might like. But if we wanted to see a lot more of the properties, one cool thing we could use is format list. And you can see that here, the other arguments that it might take, maybe zooming in on a specific property. But format list works well for us because it will return each entry, each object that kind of our commandlet finds for us, and give us a little bit more of the properties. You can see link type and target. And maybe we didn't see that by default when we ran get child item. Yeah, we didn't see the target and it even had a last write time kind of by default. This will show us last access time and creation time and maybe some other interesting information. This is a neat trick that I really want to show you because with format list, you can actually get more properties that you may not have even known that that object might carry with it. Let me show you this. If you run get child item with format hyphen list and then add an asterisk at the end, suddenly you get a ton of information for each of those objects. The attributes that might come with it, I guess a parent directory, a base name, everything that might be relative and pertinent to that object. This is just kind of specific to this file system that we're looking at right now. You can see that PS provider, what we're really looking at. But if we were to scroll through that, we can see there's a lot of stuff that maybe you hadn't seen before. So that's a good way to kind of track down some properties maybe you hadn't seen before. If you want to do a quick shorthand way to do that, get child item, the alias for format list is just FL, and then 
FL star, here's all of the cool things you can do. You can assume format wide is FW, and that does that just as well. And remember, if you don't know any of these aliases, you can check out get alias, and that will return all of the information for you. Funny thing, the alias for get alias is gal, G-A-L. And remember, the PowerShell is case insensitive, so it doesn't matter if you were to run get hyphen alias in all caps or whatever the case may be. Gal, I don't know. <laughs> That's something that you can keep in the back of your mind. PowerShell does not care about what semantics you're using, case sensitive, case insensitive, doesn't matter, caps or lowercase. So because we can use get alias and we can track down some of these maybe commands that you might use in another language, other language is not the right word, but if you're on another operating system, you're kind of used to that old school cmd.exe style or the Linux style ls, dir, maybe some of those file system commands that you're used to or anything that you would just normally type in out of habit, like echo, like echo, literally just let's display some output on the screen, echo the classic, right? We've just done that, but what did echo come from? You can gal echo just as an argument, and you can see that that is alias to write output. So if we were to simply write output, it has the exact same effect because it's simply an alias. Kind of a recap on what we talked about in the last video. But it helps me segue into a new topic and conversation because output is something that you can control in the way that you're using and interacting with PowerShell. Right now, we're working with PowerShell in just the console, PowerShell.exe, or this, this program that we have open in the command line. But how PowerShell is ran or invoked, its host environment might differ. We might get into PowerShell ISE, as we will in later videos, or maybe it's running in a web browser because you've done it with some DLL magic. Um, output will allow us to kind of change up what we're working with and how we can see things. So let me actually dive into that. If we were working with our LS output or our Python purist way, let's run get child item, we can pipe that to out, and out is what we can use to kind of modify this. And I'll use that control space bar to get some kind of suggested auto completions for us. We could out host, just as we've seen before, regular default output but it comes with some other things we can output. If you want to get it as just a string, now we're not seeing the C-sharp object anymore, but we're actually having them converted to a string, just regular kind of double quotes, as you would expect in any other programming language, or more of a text-based console, standard output, standard input, kind of the Linux way. Or this has other great stuff to us, out null, that's kind of like redirecting to forward slash dev forward slash null or kind of squelching the output so you don't get to see it. That's might That might be handy for you later down the road. Additionally, we have out file. So we've seen before and maybe some old school DOS days or cmd.exe, you can use the greater than symbol or the kind of redirection here. Let's call this um, directory dot text. Now, if I were to check that out, we've created a file, directory.txt, and we've just redirected that output, or the commandlets kind of results here. Let's actually check out the information or the content inside of that, directory.txt. I'll tab complete here, and there's our output. Interestingly enough, though, it stored it when directory had no value to it. That's kind of a little funny Easter egg. You can see the length of that file is zero at the time of kind of reading the file, but if you actually check out on the file system, it's filled with the contents of that file. So interesting thing. Maybe maybe you'll get a kick out of that. I did anyway. So that's using the regular old school redirection. PowerShell lets you do that just as easily with piping it to out hyphen file. And you will of course need to supply a parameter, right? That path following it. So let's call it again directory.txt check out what we're working with, and it's the exact same file size. It's the exact same file. So we can open it up in notepad, directory.txt, and you'll notice we have still the headers and everything that we would have expected in a regular PowerShell output, because it's format table. If we wanted to see format list or format wide, we could use just that. Or select to move kind of our properties out as needed. Uh, those are other things you could do with it. But 
those are the ways you can format your results in PowerShell and how you can output to some of them. Before I kind of close off on that, I do want to show you out grid view because you guys might like this. That might come in handy. This will give you kind of a quick GUI interface where you can actually scroll through some of the things that you're working with, click on them and do interesting things with them. Or if you had a ton of results that were just taking up a lot of space, you have a little filter up here where you can search for things. Like, okay, I only want the entries that contain the letter O or whatever the case may be, or A, or anything that you might like. You can especially add criteria for some of these properties and you can verify whether or not they contain something or do not contain or start with or equal something. And that will help you kind of narrow down your results if you have a huge data set that you're working with. So that's out grid view. I think that's kind of handy. Okay, we talked about right host. We talked about how we can output into a file or a grid view or any of those other out solutions and formatting them in a different way. Now let's work with that directory.txt file that we've created. So if you are again more Linux minded, kind of like myself, you're used to the move command, MV. PowerShell calls that move item. And if you didn't know that, again, because you're used to that kind of structure and syntax, you could just check out that alias gal MV and you'll see it tells you that is in fact move item. Same thing with CP to copy, right? Check out the alias for CP, that command is copy item. So if we wanted to kind of move this item of the directory.txt, we can bring it into our desktop. Just simply running that command has the effect. If I were to minimize, you can see my directory.txt is just there. Get PowerShell back open run ls or our get child item, you can see obviously it's not in this directory anymore, but we'll use our relative path dot forward slash or dot backslash. Check it out. Now it's in our desktop because we just moved that. If we wanted to copy item, super simple, right? Let's take a directory. And again, using a relative path, the symbols two periods for the parent directory. Let's just move it up in the file system. Now, if I were to move back, I can ls and I have a copy of that directory.txt right there. If I didn't want that file anymore though, maybe you're used to the rm command if you're Linux minded, or you're used to the del command if you're Windows minded, you can run remove hyphen item in that PowerShell pure way. Let's run remove item on directory.txt. And now that's gone. We don't have that entry anymore. We don't have that file. Some of these directories that Windows likes to put here kind of by default, I think are stupid and I never really use. So we could remove some of those if we wanted to. And you might be used to RMDIR. In PowerShell, there is no difference between a directory that we're trying to remove or a file that we're trying to remove. It all just calls it an item. So we can simply remove item. What is that one called? Save games. Let's do that. This might ask us, hey, that actually has some contents inside of that. There are files in folders that are inside of that directory or that item that we're working with. Are you sure you want to remove all of it? And you can supply yes or enter Y and work with it or any of these other options that PowerShell will give to you. If you wanted to figure out how can I just get it to shut up, like stop asking me that, check out the help for it. It'll show you the aliases that we're working with. And I'll try and scroll up here. One of these options is tat confirm, where it says, I don't care. D do it. Do it all. And same thing with tat recurse and tat force. If it says, like, hey, we're not able to do this, whatever, just ignore it. We can try some of those out. So let's remove item tat confirm. Oh, we still need to work through it. Okay, let's just use recurse instead. Oh. Can't use some of those. I guess I'm not the administrator. I'm not able to remove some of the sensitive INI files, whatever. Again, that is the command that we're using though. Remove hyphen item. That'll take the place of RM, DL, and RMDIR. So those are the commandlets that I wanted to show to you in this video. Again, super simple stuff. We're just kind of navigating around the file system. We're checking out how we can output and format our information within PowerShell. Next, we'll move on to some of the good stuff. We'll get into scripting, we're getting to profiles, variables, execution policy, stuff like that, but we got to get this beginning stuff out of the way. 
So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please do like, comment, and subscribe. There is a Discord server that you can hang out in. All of us are trying to learn, trying to get better, just jump into the cybersecurity scene. Please do click that link, join the Discord server. It's a great community. So many smart people in there. It's much smarter than me. So, uh, I'd like to see you guys in the next video. Love to see you on Patreon. Love to see you on PayPal. All the other things. I'm really bad at outros. <laughs> Thanks for watching.